Today on What It's Like, 1959 Plymouth Sport Fury Convertible, Virgil Exner, Forward Look. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. If you just stumbled on this channel for the very first time, you've hit the jackpot. We cover the lost and forgotten classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars and cars that are off the beaten path. We post up to five times or more a week with these mini documentaries. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon icon next to it to never miss a video. Be sure to stick around for Name That Tune, as well as something completely random at the end of each episode. It might be an impression, it might be a song or radio slash TV jingle. We just like to have fun here. Currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall is this 1959 Plymouth Sport Fury Convertible. What is Classic Auto Mall? It's only the largest automotive consignment dealership in the northeastern region of the US of A, with 870 cars for sale when recording this episode. When you walk through the front door, I swear you can hear Angel Angels sing. It doesn't cost a dime to get in and get this. Anybody can go there. For more information, pricing, and pictures of this 59 Fury, click the link below after the show. Let's talk 1959 Plymouth model lineup. 1959 Plymouth could be had in four models. The Savoy was at the bottom, followed by the Belvedere followed by Fury, and then sitting at the top of the heap for 1959 was the Sport Fury. Plymouth did offer wagons in all the trim levels and or models, except for the Sport Fury. The Sport Fury could only be had as a two-door hardtop or a two-door convertible. The 1959 Plymouth was a standalone year as far as styling goes, and it was designed by our boy Virgil Exner called the Forward Look. Looking at the 58 on top, 59 on the bottom, starting with the front design, they are roughly the same shape, just totally different. The 59 has a hood crease in the hood center, whereas the 58 is smooth. The fenders on the 59 have a dip or a valley where the 58s are smooth. The 58 also has mark where the 59 doesn't. The 59 has an egg crate grill and the 58 has a horizontal grill. The bumper section is interesting. Moving to the side profile, the bumper on the 59 goes the whole way down, whereas the 58 is mounted up a little bit higher and the body extends down. The fender of the 59 fits over top of the wraparound grill, which you will totally see when we do the tour in a little bit. Side trim is deeper on the 59. The gas doors are completely different. Check out the fin profiles. Moving to the rear in the rear quarter section, the fin on the 59 starts just before where the roof ends. With that said, the 58 fins look slightly higher with the lights in the fins as opposed to the 59s where the light section is just below the fins. The 59 also has dual antennas and a tire bulge section. The 59 is smooth, whereas the 58 has a sculpted line right above the rear wheel well that goes from the rear bumper to about where the door ends. Upon further examination, the 59 Fury isn't smooth in the back quarter either. It's actually got a crease on top of the rear wheel well. It just doesn't extend as far as the 58 and it's not protruded outwards. It's actually like a crease instead of a protrusion. Moving to the dash differences. They are completely different. Which one do you like better? I'm not sure which car design as a whole I like better, but if I had to choose, I would probably go with the 59 because the 58 was Christine and Christine was a possessed car and who would want a possessed car? I mean, every day would be an adventure, but would it be the adventure that you would want to do every day? Let's talk specs. 214 and a half inches long, 70.6 inches wide, 54.6 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 118 inches. It weighs 3,675 pounds. Price $3,130, which is equivalent to you spending $31,923.53 in the year 2023. Total 1959 Plymouth production was 458,261 units. Total Sport Fury was 23,857 units. And of that number, 17,867 were hardtops and 5,990 were convertibles. Let's talk standard equipment and options, starting with standard equipment, electric clock, lighter, lockable glove box, which our car had the glove box locked so we couldn't do the glove box test. Swivel seats, sport deck tire lid cover, options, not getting into all of the options, but here are some that stand out. Air conditioning, automatic, 
tilt mirror, power brakes, power steering, power windows, rear speaker, seat belts, swivel seats on all of the other trim levels, but standard on Fury. Moving on to engines, two engines on offer, 317.6 cubic inch displacement, more often referred to as just the 318, V8, 5.2 liters, V800 Super Pack, 260 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 345 pound-feet of torque with a bore of 3.9 inches and a stroke of 3.1 inches. Compression was 9 to 1. Five main bearings. When mated to a three-speed manual, 0 to 60 could be had in 8 seconds. It will go 114 miles per hour, theoretically, and it will achieve an average fuel economy of 12.2 miles to the gallon. Moving to the biggest and baddest engine on offer was the Golden Commando 395. It was a 361 cubic inch displacement V8 5.9 liters. It was good for 305 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, 395 pound-feet of torque with a bore of 4.1 inches and a stroke of 3.4 inches, compression 10 to 1 with five main bearings. With the three-speed automatic, 0 to 60 could be had in 7.8 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 123 miles per hour. Average fuel economy, 10.2 miles to the gallon, which leads us to the transmissions, which there were four transmissions on offer. Two-speed automatic power flight, three-speed automatic torque flight, three-speed manual, which was the standard transmission, or the three-speed manual with optional overdrive. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Plymouth for 1959. front-end personality, set off by dashing twin-set headlights. New flaring fin design in perfect harmony with the sweeping length and lowness of the future. And inside, new exciting luxury in Plymouth swivel seats that swing you out when you leave, swing you in when you enter. And a new fingertip control instrument panel featuring push-button control of instantaneous heat and ventilation. Here in every fine detail is a car that proudly boasts everything new for the future. New electronic mirror, new magic eye automatic headlight dimmer, and a new standard for performance in the spectacular Golden Commando V8, biggest engine in the low price field. Yours to prove if it's new, Plymouth got it. The most exciting new car of the year. In style, in engineering, in performance and luxury, here is a car alive with the spirit of the future. See your Plymouth dealer tomorrow and drive Plymouth for 1959. <laughs> All right, let's talk styling. So just notice all of this going on. See how it comes around? The headlights sit inside this hooded area that almost comes down into like almost a heart shape here, like the top of a heart. I love how this wraps around. I love how this sort of overhangs it too. It's a very interesting design choice egg crate grill here notice everything has like it's trimmed out in gold coming on top here notice the indentation or the valley and it goes back look at these mirrors how they're shaped I love the center crease, how it comes down to the bottom of the hood there.
this car has some really gorgeous lines it's all textured and the spear gets wider and deeper it seems the fin starts right here and it's a very aggressive fin look at where it starts and look at how high it gets when it comes out the back also notice it's not straight it's angled just a wee bit I never got why they put bulge in the back. I don't know if that's fake or if that's where they put the spare tire. Very interesting design choice. Check out this light design. Look how it protrudes outward here. I love this fury badge here and all of that texturized panel inside there and how it comes back this one's got dual antennas if you were ever wondering the window is plastic back here but it's a huge window coming up and getting inside we're going to get in the passenger side there isn't enough room to get into the driver's side but just notice how these door handles are designed it's a nice big door handle you pull it back like this so first off just know that the window is all trimmed notice this nice little flap so whenever So notice this flap, so when you shut the door, it goes over top of this seam to keep the water out. The doors are very light, or at least this one's very light. Here is what the door panel looks like, and just take a look at all of the colors going on. I love this color pattern. This feels like... It's like a fabric material. This is a vinyl armrest, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. It operates like that, it goes down nice and free. Here's the vent window. Check out the mechanism. Look at how big that is. That operates the vent window, and then you just slide it out of the way and And that's how it operates. That's a very interesting looking vent window. The mechanism is almost as big as the window. That's pretty, pretty crazy. Just take a look at this interior. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person over the hood impression looks like. And notice the rear view mirror placement. I would not have placed the rear view mirror there because it's in your line of sight. I would have placed it here, or if it had to be on the dashboard, over here. It's kind of sort of in your line of sight. Underneath the steering wheel, I wear size 34 pants, and the only reason I show this is because these steering wheels in these cars generally don't telescope or tilt. So, and, and a lot of times the seats don't move. These seats are adjustable front and back but they don't go up or down so if you can't fit in the car you can't really buy the car so i'm just showing you there is tons of space underneath the steering wheel and also just check out how this steering wheel is designed it's a big steering wheel it's a little bit thicker than what i like but it looks like it's translucent very nice up above there's sun visors they're a bit on the slender side, but they're actually kind of nice. They're, they're, they're very long. Over here, to unlatch the convertible top, passenger side has a sun visor as well as the latch for the convertible top. Just take a gander at these seats. They're very interesting. It's like a cloth material with like a vinyl mix. Armrest and or seat for the center occupant. 
over here, headlights. This is to control the mirror. See the mirror moving? I don't know. That might this might be the very first toggle style mirror. In the comment section below if there was one before this. Over here, these are push buttons for different drive select modes. Up here is drive, neutral, reverse, second, first. Center, gauge binnacle, left turn signal indicator, speedometer, right turn signal indicator, odometer, gas gauge, coolant temperature, two idiot lights. One is for oil pressure, one is for amp meter. I'm not entirely sure which one is which. If you know in the comment section below. Over here, this one controls all of the ventilation options. Ventilation, defrost, high, low, off. And it's control. That lever controls or adjusts the temperature of the heat. How cool is that? This is for the wipers. This is for the radio um, volume. This one is for the radio tuner. Over here, this is the ashtray and it works like that. Cigarette lighter up on top. Notice it's in the center for everybody to share. This is what I look like. There's tons of room in this car. I got tons of headroom and it doesn't feel claustrophobic in this car. This car actually feels very huge because it is. It's a very big car. Getting in the rear seat, just fold the seat forward like that. This is the convertible top, like the boot. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or glass to pillar ratio. That is what the rear view looks like out the back window. Love that rear view with the fins. You do have more storage space while the top is in use. If you were wondering, this window back here is just the plastic window, not real glass. Creature comforts. There aren't any coat hooks. There is not a dome light, but there are lights located inside here. So that's kind of, that's really nice. Armrest as well as window crank for the window ashtray located on the back of each seat there's an ashtray there there's also an ashtray here and everything that's found on the driver's side is also found on the passenger side armrest window crank and here is how the window operates so look at that that's pretty cool how that operates it's also got a light here Real quick gander of what the trunk looks like. It's a massive trunk, but the spare tire isn't where the spare tire bulge is on the trunk lid, which begs the question, why did they put it there? Coming to the under the hood section, getting under the hood, there is a release right here. That is the hood pop as well as the release. And the hood is just extremely heavy. And that is what the engine looks like. Notice the single master cylinder back there, non-power assisted. It does have power steering. The generator is way off to this side. Just take a look at how beefy this is. I'm going to take a step back. The hood opens up nice and tall, so if you had to work on this, you could. It's got one horn, but it's huge. On to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide on the positive side, fast and straight lines and on the curves, typical 50s gadgetry. I'm going to add a few nice interior options and colors, spacious swivel seats, which I am so mad at myself for not knowing that this car had swivel seats. For some reason, I thought that that was only reserved for the higher up market position Chrysler cars, such as Chrysler and Imperial. 1950s gadgetry against it, pug ugly compared to the neat 57 and 58. That's debatable. 
Early Rust Out was and is still a threat. Gadgetry, Gremlins, can be thirsty. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title, both correctly, first one to do so, will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. That's a deep dive on one of my favorite bands. In fact, it was my favorite song from that band until I got a speeding ticket listening to it. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more involved with this car community, that's what this channel is. It's more than just a car channel, it's a car community. If you wanna check that out, the link will be in the description. So if I catch you on here or on there, just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, wait a second, here's some scenes for our next episode. We're gonna be taking a look at what Pontiac offered in the late 70s as a personal luxury car. 1977 Pontiac Grand Prix with the power plush seats. That's what's coming up next on what it's like. Tune in tomorrow to see that car. And until then, toodaloo! Hey Whitey, I'll give you a dollar to clean out the crappers. 